In this week's video, I wanna talk all about photography apps. What are my go-to apps when I'm taking a picture with my phone, editing an image on my phone, or sharing those images to social media? Welcome to the Photo Genius channel. This video is kindly sponsored by NordVPN. Hi, Paul here from Photogenius. Welcome to my channel where I post regular photography tutorials, all designed to help you get more for your digital camera or even your smartphone so you can take better photos. If you are new to the channel, please consider subscribing. Now this week I'm talking all about photography related apps and there are thousands to choose from that you can download to either your smartphone or a tablet. But in this video, I wanna concentrate on the apps that I personally use all the time, either when taking photos with my phone, editing images or sharing them to social media. Plus, I'm gonna throw in a few bonus tips along the way for good measure. Now, if you want a bit more control over the way your images turn out, then I definitely recommend checking out Halide Mark II for iPhone. This allows you to manually control your camera settings, including things like ISO and shutter speed. Now, this is something that the Apple native camera app doesn't allow you to do. When you first open the app, everything will be automated, including the exposure and the focusing. What I really want to do is control the camera manually. There's a little pop-out menu from the right-hand side of the screen. Click on manual, and now you have the ability to change the ISO and the shutter speed. It's as simple as swiping up and down the screen to change the shutter speed, faster shutter speed down, swipe up for a slower shutter speed, and along the top, swipe left to right to change the ISO. Very, very simple, and that just gives you a lot more control over your exposure. Now in terms of focus, it's very simple. Tap on the screen to focus. If I tap in the foreground, it will focus on the front of the keyboard here. You'll see the background is out of focus. But of course, if I tap on the background, it will adjust the focus. There is also a manual focus option. Click on the AF icon, swipe up and down, and you can manually adjust the focus as well. There's even focus peaking, which will overlay green on the areas of the image which are at their sharpest. And this, I think, is a pretty neat app. Now there's plenty of other things you can do, including changing the white balance, and there's also a timer built in. But that's just a quick overview of what Halide Mark II can do. For smartphones and devices using Android, I would definitely check out Adobe Lightroom. Now, whilst technically it is a photo editing app, it also has a camera feature built in that does offer manual controls. Next up is Hipstamatic. Now, this is an app that I absolutely fell in love with back in 2009, the year the app was launched and also the year that I got my first iPhone. Now, I love Hipstamatic so much that a while ago, I actually put together a dedicated video all about it. I'll put a link in the description below this video and also at the end, just in case you want to check that one out next. If you enjoyed shooting with film cameras back in the day or just love anything with a retro feel, then Hipstamatic is for you. The app is designed to emulate the experience of shooting with a film camera. And whilst there is a lack of pro features, for me, that's part of the appeal. You can adjust the exposure, but to be honest, I leave this in auto because the fun part is being able to select from a range of virtual film types and lenses all of which will give you different results. Now time for a quick tip, and this is a pretty straightforward one. My tip is to think like a photographer. Yes, I know this is essentially a phone, but when this comes out of my pocket and my intention is to take a picture, this is a camera, and I am in that photography mindset. Now I think because they make it so easy to take pictures with a smartphone, we tend to have more of a point and shoot mentality, and we don't put as much effort into taking a picture with a smartphone as we would with a larger camera like maybe a DSLR or a mirrorless camera, but I think that should change. So next time you're taking a picture with your smartphone, just think like a photographer, put in that extra bit of effort. For example, think a little bit about composition before you press that button and take a picture because composition is incredibly important and it can make or break a picture. As an example, here you see me going through a very low vantage point, taking advantage of the reflections on a puddle. 
Now, before I reveal my app of choice for editing images on my smartphone, I have to say there is a massive range of apps to choose from, and there are some really good contenders out there. Um, special mention to Adobe Lightroom, Photoshop Express, and also the very cool VSCO. But my app of choice for editing images on the go is currently, and has been for a long time, Snapseed. Now, before I show you exactly why I love Snapseed so much, there is another app on my smartphone that I wouldn't be without. It's keeping me and my data safe, and I'm talking about NordVPN, who have very kindly sponsored this week's video. A VPN is a service that protects you, your data, and your privacy online by encrypting your internet traffic and hiding your IP address. Now for me, this is particularly useful as sometimes I'm working on location using my mobile phone or public Wi-Fi to stay connected. NordVPN is protecting me and my data even now when I'm on the move and I'm using my phone to do things like check emails, update my website, or just update my socials. NordVPN has got me covered. NordVPN has a network of over 500 servers across 60 countries. So using the app, I can easily select any server I like in any location. And this is really cool if you want to access content that isn't available in your country. NordVPN have also recently introduced threat protection, offering even more security against cyber threats, malicious ads, harmful websites and block trackers. So why not try it for yourself? All you need to do is check out the link below this video to get a two year plan plus one additional month with a huge discount. Plus it's risk free with Nord's 30 day money back guarantee. A big thank you to NordVPN for sponsoring this week's video and for supporting the Photo Genius channel. Okay, so let's get on to Snapseed. All of these images were edited using Snapseed, which is a free app. So I've chosen this image of a church. This was actually taken on a visit to England. And uh, to be honest, it's probably an image that doesn't need a lot of work, but I just want to show you some of the basics of what Snapseed can do. Now there are some preset filters, but I usually skip those and go straight to the tools menu. Now, as you can see, there's a bunch of options to choose from. Now to save time, I'm just going to show you some of my favorites. I nearly always start with tune image. Here you can do things like adjust the exposure, um, adjust the shadows, highlights, and there's a really cool feature called ambience. Now the way Snapseed works is you simply scroll up and down to select an option and then left to right to make a change. Now I'm going to show you what the ambience does. If I select ambience from the menu and scroll to the left with my finger or swipe to the left with my finger, the ambience will be reduced. If I scroll to the right, it will be increased. And you'll see the sky getting bluer and a bit more cloud detail appearing. So that's, um, that's done. Click on tick. Now the tools I would definitely recommend checking out are tune image, white balance, crop, healing, and the brush tools. Those are my favorites and my go-tos. But for this particular image, I want to give it a slightly old retro-y kind of vintage style, make it look like it was shot on a film camera. So I'm going to go tools. And the first thing I'm going to do is turn it to black and white. Now, there's a few different black and white options. I like that one. So I'm going to click on tick and it's been applied. I'm now going to go to tools and I want to add a little bit of a color overlay to the image. To do this, I'm going to go to noir and select a sepia kind of tone. Again, there's plenty to choose from. I'm going to go with this one. I can also make adjustments to this, by the way. Everything is adjustable. Click on tick. Next, I'm going to add a reverse vignette. Now, vignette usually means um, darkening the, the corners of the image. It's a very popular photography technique. But with old prints, often they would fade on the outside of the image. So to give it that faded look, I'm going to reverse vignette. I'm going to make the outside of the circle brighter. Now, just to finish it off, I'm going to give it a frame. And what I'm going to do is choose a old film style frame just to match the sort of vintage look of the image. Um, I think that one looks pretty cool. And that's it. I'm done. Now this video is just a snapshot of what Snapseed can actually do. I've made a dedicated video all about it. I'll put a link in the description below this video so you can check it out and see more of the great features that Snapseed has to offer. And remember, this app is absolutely free. 
So now I want to talk about the app that I like to use to share my images online. Now this one probably won't come as much of a surprise because for social media, sharing, showcasing my images online, my app of choice is Instagram. Want some inspiration? Check out National Geographic on Instagram for amazing nature photography. If you love wildlife, check out Paul Nicolan or the stunning work of David Lloyd. Maybe portrait photography is your thing. If so, then take a look at the work of British photographer and 60s icon David Bailey. And of course, Instagram is also the home to Nikon, Canon, Fujifilm and many, many more. With Instagram, you do get to choose whether your profile is public or private, and you can have more than two profiles. So for example, I've got two profiles set up. One is a private one, and that's where I share family photos with family members and select friends. And the other account is of course public, and that's my photo genius account. So why not check out my profile on Instagram for behind the scenes photos and videos from my travels and photography workshops. Just search photo genius Brisbane. So now I've shared with you my favorite apps for taking photos, editing photos, and sharing photos all on my smartphone. I'd really love to hear from you guys. What are your favorite photography related apps? I'd particularly love to hear from you Android users. Perhaps you could share the details in a comment below so other people can check those apps out. Now, if you've enjoyed this video, you know what to do. Please consider giving it a thumbs up because it does help the videos get noticed and that helps my channel grow. If you are new to the channel, please consider subscribing. I do try to put new videos out every single week. All that's left to do is for me to say big thank you for watching and I hope to see you again sometime soon. See ya. Bye.